I found a blind and deaf girl under my apartment building. Because she was so lonely, I kept her by my side, as a girlfriend without anyone knowing. Until her fiancé came to find her, I quietly moved away. She was dressed in designer clothes and looked very pretty. I fell in love with her at first sight. She was pure and refined, my ideal type. She stood under my apartment building for a whole day without leaving, and I watched her from the window for a whole day. I went downstairs and took her hand. She hesitated for a moment and then followed me. She didn't respond when I asked her questions, and when I brought her back, I found out she was blind. I sat in front of her and observed her. The more I observed, the more I fell in love. I really needed a girl like this who couldn't see and wouldn't talk. At first, she didn't give me any response. I planned to take her to the police station. I tentatively took her hand and wrote in her palm, I will take you back. She immediately grabbed my hand and wrote, take me in. I continued to write, you want to live in my house for free. She took off the watch on her wrist. This is for you. Is that okay? It looked like a designer watch, but I didn't really want to take her money. I asked her why she didn't go home. She didn't respond. I carefully took her hand. It's not impossible to keep you, D my girlfriend. She nodded her head and wrote the word okay. She gave me the feeling of a pet cat that can't take care of itself. On the 31st day after I found her, I made a move on her. That day she came over and quietly leaned on my shoulder. The TV was playing the popular drama of the season, when the male and female leads were kissing. I looked down and saw her innocent profile. I leaned over and touched her. Her body stiffened like being electrocuted, so I wrapped my arms around her waist and kissed her deeply. She didn't push me away. I asked her many things. You can't see, can't hear, and don't speak. How do you recognize words? She remained silent about the things she didn't want to tell me. Writing words in the palm of her hand became the only way for us to communicate, but most of the time it was me outputting to her. Every time she took my hand, the temperature of her fingertips touching my palm made my heart itch, but she seldom responded to me, either sitting or standing silently in place. She didn't seem to mind that she couldn't see or hear. She gave me the feeling of having experienced many hardships, and I felt very sorry for her. Since the switch was turned on by the kiss last time, I didn't have so many scruples. Anyway, she couldn't see. I often changed clothes in front of her, said some things I didn't dare to say to girls before. She was very smart and quickly figured out the general structure of the house and could do many things on her own. But I was afraid that she would leave one day. I couldn't bear it. One day, my ex-girlfriend came to my house with her current boyfriend, saying that she had left something behind. She had moved out so long ago. How could there be anything left? She knew I was sensitive. She just wanted to come over and show off that she had someone new. I used to love my ex-girlfriend, Anna, very much. But she said, I was emotionally unstable and often made her tired. I knew this was true, so I was very upset at the time. I don't know how many bottles of cheap wine I drank before I felt better. I opened the door wide and let her take it herself. I watched Leela uneasily. Leela is the nickname I gave her. She didn't tell me her name when I asked for. When Nana came in Nan saw the girl, she clenched her fist. She was obviously unhappy. Whenever she was unhappy in the past, I had to follow her around to coax her. I nervously held Leela's hand, feeling her stroking my palm, alternating between light and heavy. I held her tightly, afraid she would be unhappy. I don't know if she could feel my increasingly fast heartbeat. Her heartbeat also inexplicably began to speed up. I let go of her to observe her reaction. She looked up at me, suddenly like a normal person. I was called over by Anna, so I forgot about her unusual reaction for a moment. As soon as I went in, Anna pressed me against the door. So you've moved on so quickly. Her boyfriend is waiting for her just a wall away. She doesn't seem to care. I felt inexplicably nauseous. Stay away from me. I stared at her. What's wrong? Didn't you like me the most? Isn't it exciting with the two of them outside? She suddenly pounced on me to kiss me. I was caught off guard. At this moment, Leela pushed the door and came in. She even turned her head to look at us. If it weren't for her still dull eyes, I would almost doubt that she could see. Anna was scared off without getting what she wanted. I immediately pulled Leela over and kissed her deeply in front of Anna. I don't want to entangle with this person anymore. I also don't want Leela to misunderstand that there is something between me and her. George, don't fucking regret it and come back to me. She stormed out, 
The past shame was spread out in front of my eyes. I looked at Leela somewhat lost. She reached out and hugged me, snuggling into my arms. I lowered my head and kissed her again, thanking her for her comfort, and said sorry. Even if she couldn't hear it. 5. I noticed her ears were a bit red. It was the first time she had such a reaction. I pushed her to sit on the bed and kissed her saying, wait for me to change clothes, I'll take you out for something delicious, because she couldn't see. I never avoided her. After changing into a casual and lazy outfit, I turned my head and found her face was flushed. I ran over to check on her with worrying. You're not having another allergic reaction, are you? Last time I accidentally fed her peanut butter. She had a fever overnight and refused to go to the hospital. I took care of her all night with a cold towel. I checked on her like a baby. And she got redder and redder. I touched her face with worrying. Do we need to go to the hospital? She suddenly stood up and went to the bathroom. When she came out, her face was not red anymore. I took her hand and went to eat. Today I always felt like I was being watched. I turned to her and said, Why do I always feel like someone is watching me? She didn't answer me, she just shook the hand that was holding mine. When it was time to cross the street, she just walked, I held her back and reminded her, even if the light is green, you dare to walk by yourself without me. Without me, I feel like you would be in danger. I muttered to myself again, in the evening, when I was unbuttoning her clothes, she uncomfortably took a step back. Don't move, the pajamas are too small, the buttons are tight, I can't undo them, she obediently stood still. She always sleeps holding me at night. One leg draped over my waist holding me tightly. Sometimes, when I wake up in the morning, she is lying on top of me. She can't talk, and I don't know if her body is uncomfortable somewhere. Maybe she was a bit tired today. She put her leg up as usual and fell asleep. She didn't sleep well tonight, and I struggled to fall asleep. In the morning, as usual, I kissed her and noticed a slight blackness under her eyes. I reached out to touch it. And she suddenly opened her eyes and looked at me blankly. If I didn't know she was blind, I would really think she was looking at me. She reached out and wrapped her arms around me, turned over and pressed me to the side. Because she couldn't make a sound, she hummed twice and fell asleep again. I closed my eyes and didn't want to wake her up again. As time went on, she became more and more accustomed to my home. She could even take out the trash and peel apples. I was afraid she would cut her hand, so I took the knife away. She reached out in the air, didn't catch anything, and then got angry. But I was by her side, and she could catch me. She pulled my arm and bit me on the neck. I was shocked and stood still. I could only let her do as she pleased. Why are you biting people? Are you a puppy? The corners of her mouth clearly hoked. We are more and more like ordinary couples. I am becoming more and more dependent on her mentally. Anna came to me many times, she wanted to get back together. What are you doing with someone who is both blind and deaf? George, I broke up. Can we get back together? I looked at her with contempt. Even if she's blind and deaf, she's better than you. Anna, I really loved you before, but now I really don't. Suddenly someone bumped into me from behind. I was about to get angry. And then I saw Leela. She was holding a garbage bag in her hand. This is indeed her usual route to throw out the trash. Baby. How did you get out here? I pulled her and wrapped my arms around her waist. Anna, I love her now, very much. I will cure her in the future, no matter what it takes. So, don't come here anymore. There's nothing left for you in this house. I threw the trash into the trash can from a distance and took Leela home. That day I was sitting in the living room watching TV. I was hugging her. The rent is almost due. I feel like moving would be nice, at least we wouldn't be disturbed by some strange people. The hand that Leela had around my waist tightened slightly. She turned over and sat on my lap, staring blankly ahead. I really like Leela, but is this really good for Leela? I looked at her and sighed. It would be nice if she could sense it. I hugged her tightly, my chin resting on her shoulder. She slid her hand down my back. She didn't know what was wrong with me, but she could always sense my emotions. I was a bit depressed. I bought some wine and drank it at home. Leela must have smelled the alcohol and was very resistant. I didn't force you to drink. What's wrong? I pinched her face. She got even angrier and knocked over my wine bottle. I started to mutter when I got drunk. I'm so selfish for possessing you like this. You used to dress so well. Your family must have been quite well off. What am I going to do if you leave one day? Or maybe I should send you back. I asked blankly. 
Do you love me? Leela, can you say something? Finally, I was helped back to the bedroom by her in a daze, and once we got to the bedroom, she started to misbehave. I saw her unbuttoning my shirt, I grabbed her hand and asked her, what are you doing? But the more I stopped her, the angrier she got, so I had to let her have her way. When I woke up in the morning, I was all dazed, I'm the type who easily blacks out when drinking. I looked at her sleeping face and felt extremely guilty. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Leela, what did I do to you? I kept apologizing to her. She looked at me as if I was an idiot, slapped me, and then pulled up my hand. Things that happen naturally. There's no need to blame yourself, and I like you too. After this incident, I felt that our relationship became more intimate. I took her out shopping, watching movies, buying her favorite food, of course. I was the only one watching the movie. She just leaned on my shoulder and fell asleep. Her lips were getting closer and closer to my neck, and she even licked her lips. The ticklish feeling came back. I looked at her and closed my eyes tightly, muttered quietly, little naughty. Her breath was spraying on my neck. I couldn't concentrate on the movie at all. In the second half, I just copied her, letting her feel my discomfort, but she thought I was playing with her. Maybe because it was the first time she kissed me actively. I was a bit dazed after leaving the cinema. I left her at the door and forgot to hold her hand. I reached out and grabbed nothing. I turned back and saw her being bumped around at the entrance of the cinema. Looking from a distance, it inexplicably made my heart ache. I ran over and pulled her to go. I'm sorry. I said to the air. She just wouldn't go. Her face told me that she was angry. She wouldn't go. No matter how much I pulled her. I didn't know how to coax her. I simply wanted to pick her up and go. But she resisted fiercely. Then I'm leaving. You can stand here. I wrote to her. She violently shook off my hand. Even more angry. I just stood by her side. Observing her reaction. She stood there with her face up in pride. Her cold eyes made me feel a bit guilty. I surrender and carefully hugged her. My job is to take some online designs. I don't like to go out to work. Because I have a good cooperation with several companies, the income is also considerable. Because she was here, life was going smoothly. Just when I was full of confidence and wanted to have a long future with her. Her family came to the door. She's called Willow, my fiancé. The stern man looked at me with a hint of anger. Give her back to me, the man said, and was about to rush over to beat me up. I was stunned, standing still. Leela immediately blocked in front of me and pushed him away. Don't touch him, she spoke. I was surprised and took a step back, watching her speak. She turned around in a panic, pulled my hand and said to me, Listen to my explanation. When I broke free from her hand, I saw despair in her eyes. She still didn't give up, Pan begged me. Wait for me. Okay. I'll explain to you. Willow was quickly taken away by her family. I looked at the traces of her all over the room, only feeling an emptiness in my heart. I was scared. I was not good enough for her. But I couldn't stand the room without her even more. I packed up my things and returned to my old home. My parents passed away when I was young. I was raised by my grandparents, but they passed away not long ago. I suddenly came back, which was a bit strange to the neighbors, at dinner time. A few neighbors who had a good relationship with my grandparents brought me some food. Fortunately, they didn't ask me why I suddenly came back. The next day at noon, someone knocked on my door while I was in a deep sleep. I walked over in a daze to open the door. The person outside the door was Leela's mother. I suddenly got a bit nervous and immediately lowered my head. But she gently grabbed my hand. Child, can you help my daughter? Whatever conditions you put forward, I will agree. I was a bit at a loss. Looking at her, I invited her in and poured her a glass of water. She continued to say, her marriage with her husband was arranged, because the marriage was unhappy. It hurt the child. Two years ago, Leela's father had an affair outside, which was discovered by Leela. She also found out that her father had brought his illegitimate daughter into the company. Her parents had been pretending to be a loving couple in front of her to ensure her healthy growth. When the dream shattered, reality was in front of her. She couldn't stand it and gradually became mentally abnormal. Her father not only didn't care about her but also forced her to marry the nephew of the mistress. But Leela was very resistant. The mental torture made her vision and hearing gradually decline. The doctor said it was because she had been under some kind of suggestion that she would be like this. Every word the ass said seemed to stab me in the heart. 
Why doesn't she speak? I asked her mother. She blames us for betraying her, so she refuses to speak again. The aunt said, can you help her? Her mood is even lower when she comes home, saying that we have hurt her again. Her father doesn't care about her anymore. I can't live without her. I only have this one daughter. Aunt begs you. She was about to kneel as she spoke. Aunt, don't do this. I said, and quickly helped her up. Let me think about it again. When she left, she was wiping her tears and sighing, which made me feel heartbroken. After a brief relaxation, I went back, just arrived and saw the person I hate the most. You thought she was a treasure, didn't you? Didn't expect that she has a fiance. Anna blocked my way. You're pretty hardworking, waiting here just to tell me this. I said, and prepared to leave. She grabbed me. Not only that, I was the one who notified her family to pick her up. Anna, if you have something against me, come at me. Don't hurt Leela. The only reason I had left made me restrain myself. George, don't think about getting rid of me. She glared at me. Suddenly behind her, I saw Leela. Leela walked over and slapped her. Anna suddenly looked up and saw her. Her anger subsided a lot. Apologize, Leela said coldly, just as Anna was about to say something. Leela said again, or I'll ruin you in the future. Her eyes were very cold. The last time I saw her in the bedroom, it was the same look. After Anna apologized, she turned and ran away. I was about to speak, and she fell towards me. Between the touch of our skin, I was burned by her. The apology was stuck in my throat. Why is it so hot? I said. She didn't answer me. Why do you treat yourself like this? I looked at her with heartache. Her weight on me became heavier and heavier, and finally she fell. I nervously called an ambulance. When she was sent to the hospital, she tightly held my hand and didn't let go. The nurse said let her hold it then. She had a high fever. The phone in her pocket kept ringing. I saw the note was mom, so I answered it. In the end, the two of us stayed with her in the hospital overnight. When I woke up in the morning, only she and I were in the ward. She was staring at me with her eyes open. I don't know how long she had been watching. I just got up and touched her forehead. She took the opportunity to hug me tightly. Leela, let go first, I said to her. She raised her head to reach my lips. Be good and let go first. Let me check I comforted her. Don't leave me. Her voice was very small making me couldn't help but feel heartache. When did you get better? I asked her. When your ex-girlfriend came, she finished speaking with a somewhat nervous expression, observing my reaction. I shouldn't have lied to you. Don't leave me. She finished this sentence. Her eyes reddened. I looked down and didn't look at her. Suddenly remembering the day I was changing clothes in front of her. I really wanted to find a hole to drill into. Let go first, I said. I won't let go even if I die, she said. Are you stupid? What if I lied to you for your money? If you just want my money, it would be easier for me, she said. When her mother came in, she saw us having a hard time separating. I was so scared that I immediately jumped off the bed. She was afraid that I would leave again. So she quickly sat up, frowning at me. Let go first, I said to her. She looked a bit wrong. I looked apologetically at the aunt. She smiled knowingly. Aunt, you guys talk. I'll wait outside, I said. The aunt was about to say okay. She grabbed my hand again. I made a firm resolution at the door of the ward. No matter what she will be like in the future, I will always accompany her. So later I used all the savings of these years to buy a house near their home. Why do you have to do so much for me? Leela said to me with some worry. Okay. These are what I should do. I touched her head. The aunt nodded at me with some grateful eyes, and I also smiled at her. It took two days to move. I was a bit tired. She immediately found a group of people, liberating my labor. She is still like before. Likes to stay quietly by my side. Although she can speak, she is still sparing of words. At night I was changing clothes. And she suddenly ran in. I didn't have time to close the door. And she slipped in again. We agreed to sleep in separate rooms. You're not keeping your word. I said to her. But I can't sleep without you, she said. Actually, I didn't really want to sleep separately from her. And I also had insomnia every day when I was separated from her. But I want to protect her. And she always feels that I am alienating her. Before going to bed, she held me in her arms. And we talked for a long time. Most of the time, it's either me talking or me asking. The way she looked at me was serious and firm. I will always be with Leela until you don't need me. I said, I need you in this life, the next life. 
and the next eight lives, her eyes brightened. She still likes to hold me tightly, with her legs hanging on my waist, as if she sleeps most comfortably in this position. When I woke up the next day, the door of the bedroom was open, and the light-colored curtains blocked the dazzling sunlight. She opened her eyes in a daze, I just finished cooking and returned to the bedroom and touched her face. She woke up immediately, took a look at the clock on the wall, it was already 3 o'clock, she was a little embarrassed and looked at me innocently. Then she raised the corner of her mouth, leaned over and kissed me again and again. Little lazy pig. I couldn't wake you up no matter how I kissed you just now, I said. She was a little embarrassed and a little moody, she looks good today. I made something delicious, get up and eat, I said. After eating, the ad called me out alone and said, George, auntie really appreciates you. Her eyes were a bit moist, I haven't seen her so happy in a long time. I originally wanted to divorce, but the company was created by him and me. My family is well known in the industry, and many investments were pulled by me. There is too much of my hard work in the company. If I don't give this to her, I won't be at peace. His grandfather is abroad. I rarely tell them about my grievances, so they don't know. Everything was going well. Willa was also doing well in the company, but her dad insisted on bringing that person to the company. I looked at her with some heartache. Can you help me persuade her to return to the company? Auntie finished speaking and left. You have your own considerations. It's okay if you don't want to persuade. After sending her mother away, I opened the door and saw her standing behind the door, which scared me. Shall we go back and try? I said to her. She smiled and said softly, with you by my side. I'm not afraid of anything. During the time she left, her father's illegitimate daughter was thriving in the company. That person's assistant happened to be the person who claimed to be her fiancé, named Makoto. On the first day at the company, he came uninvited to provoke us. Willow, do you really think I care about you? How could I like a madman? Makoto said. Do you think too highly of yourself? I was about to beat him up, but was held back by Leela, she said. Do you deserve it? You think you can show off here by relying on some unclean people? An illegitimate daughter is always an illegitimate daughter and can never be on the table. As for you who are pretending to be powerful, you will pay the price for today's arrogance sooner or later. This is a company, not your playground. Probably didn't expect Leela to fight back. Makoto left a little guilty. So our Leela can actually fight back. I touched her face, hold her tight and let her not be afraid. After staying with her in the company for almost half a year, I finally understood why she was like this. Because her father didn't treat her as a daughter at all. He openly held a birthday party for his illegitimate daughter in the company. During meetings, he always praised the illegitimate daughter and suppressed Willow. He didn't give her opportunities and even deprived her of opportunities. Always give her the hardest mess and give the most beneficial project to the illegitimate daughter. But this actually didn't trip Willow, who has the blood of three generations of business flowing in her blood. Instead, it raised his beloved illegitimate daughter into a waist who opens her mouth for foo and stretches out her hand for clothes. During the days in the company, Willow and I often stayed up all night, ran one business after another, and cleared up one unclear relationship network after another. When the situation became a little clearer, we finally had a chance to catch our breath, just in time. Her birthday is coming soon, so I wanted to leave work early to give her a surprise. Unexpectedly, I met Anna at the gate of the community. Anna, are you finished? I clenched my fist. George, I know I was wrong. Please, can you leave that cripple and be with me? She said. Who are you scolding? I was so angry that I let go of her and walked towards the community. She caught up again. Then you give me a breakup fee to make up for my loss. I have a headache. I never thought she would say such a thing. Okay, how much do you want? I will give you all. From now on, you will never come to me again. I took a few steps back. If I'm too close to her, I will suffocate. 20,000. I want cash, she said. I'll give it to you tomorrow. I'm very busy today. I said, no, today. Or I'll bother you every day. I don't understand how it developed into this. In desperation, I went to the bank with her. I just want everything to end quickly. Leela is so hard now, I don't want to affect her. When I came back, it was too late for Leela's surprise, I went to the cake shop to buy a small cake and went home. When I opened the door, I found that Leela had already come back, and the atmosphere in the room was inexplicably oppressive. I walked over and put my hand on her shoulder. 
and she pulled me over somewhat violently. A strong smell of alcohol rushed into my nose. I turned my head sharply and saw a row of wine on the table. She had drunk a little of each. She slapped me. Where have you been? I bought you a cake, I said. She glanced at the cake and said, What else? We just looked at each other. She was falling apart. This is the first time I have seen her like this, knowing that I have caused trouble again. I'm sorry I said apologetically. Tell me, why did you get in the car with her? Where did you go? What did you do? For every sentence she said. The hysteria in her voice became heavier. I hugged her nervously, trying to explain to her. I, did you finally find out that I'm really a madman? Am I making you tired? Are you planning to abandon me again? She was very talkative today, probably because of the alcohol. She didn't give me a chance to explain at all. Willow, I called her, and she was stunned. I love you. Only you. I don't think you are a madman. Being with you is the happiest thing for me, and I won't leave you alone. Do you understand? I said. She burrowed into my arms and sobbed softly, venting her emotions like a child. I originally wanted to give you a surprise, but Anna came to trouble me again. So I went to the bank with her. I don't want her to disturb us anymore. I said, I'm sorry. I apologized to her. Makoto sent a few photos to my company's mailbox. I couldn't control my emotions. She held me tightly. When I felt she was quiet and about to fall asleep, I patted her on the back. Get up. Are you hungry? I'll cook for you. She not only did not let go, but hugged me tighter and took a deep breath in my arms. I touched her head, got up to cook her a hangover soup. She kept hugging me from behind. When we went to bed at night, the two of us lay separately. I caught her back and held her tightly. I shouldn't doubt you, she said softly. But you have to tell me. Don't hide it from me, she muttered softly. I turned her over and kissed her, whispering okay. Two years have passed. She has suffered too much. Makoto and his cousin are together in private, and they always come to show off in front of us. We almost tea and live in the company, and we are too busy to do anything. Look at these two projects. They just got started. I took the file and went to show her. She threw the file on the desk, got up and burrowed into my arms. Baby, she called me. I feel she is too tired. Go to the inner room and sleep for a while. I said, no, she said. She hugged me leaned me on the desk and kissed me. I gently rubbed her eyes and looked at her with heartache. I made you lose weight. George the first want. She is getting bolder in front of me. On the one hand, I feel that this is not good. On the other hand, I can't bear to let her down. I sigh. She succeeded and looked at me with a smile. My hand was on her thigh, and I held her back to the room. After a struggle for the great cause of mankind, I said, let's rest. Willow, call the wife and let you sleep, she said. Wife, I called out, and her ears and neck turned red. I laughed at her. You are inexperienced and love to play. She was angry and tossed me for a while, and then got up to wash. Before the shareholders meeting, her father came to find her. He lowered his head with an unclear mood. You have to work hard. Dad also thinks highly of you. Willow smiled, but did not respond to him. I know that even if she doesn't say it, she must be very upset in her heart. I touched her face. She hugged me to calm her mood. I kissed her nose. It's okay. I'm here. She hummed in a muffled voice. She was hugged and sat on the desk again. And she was never tired of this posture. Baby, she leaned in. Give me a kiss. Soon, the company held a shareholders meeting. Auntie released the news of Willow's father's affair and with the help of her grandfather abroad. Most of the votes at the shareholders meeting leaned towards Willow. She successfully sat in that position. I watched her happily jumping around in the office, and I was sincerely happy for her. I pulled her hand and shook it, and she suddenly fell. Willow, I was so scared that I yelled. Half a day later, Willow woke up in the hospital. The doctor said she was overworked and needed to rest well. So the NTH time she reached out to the tablet, I stared at her seriously. I have important things. She looked at me embarrassedly. I can't resist her softening and hardening. I gave her the tablet. The first thing she did was to fire the illegitimate daughter Anne Makoto. And the second thing was to contact the media for interviews. She doesn't like these gossips. I don't quite understand. When she was being interviewed, her father knew that she had fired her daughter and rushed over in a rage. Encountering the media, Makoto and his daughter also came with him. Under the pressure of the media, the three of them fled in a hurry, and the world finally calmed down. 
We are preparing to travel abroad, looking at the hotel online in advance. Before going abroad, I drove her to the suburbs and parked on the deserted road. We leaned on the car, watching the leaves fall and fall on our shoulders. I raised my hand to help her remove a piece from her head and gently kissed her forehead. I don't have to look at her face anymore. She looked up as if she had been wronged. Yeah. I touched her back. Husband, she called me. Say I said, marry me. Shall we get the certificate? I got in the car and drove away. And she chased over angrily and asked, Aren't you going to marry me? George, did you lay me? I smiled and said to her get in the car. What are you waiting for? George, I want a big diamond ring, she said. Okay. The certificate was obtained the next day, and we set off for a European trip the day after. For the first three days abroad, we hardly went out except for meals. Husband, open your eyes. She didn't let me go early in the morning. Once when we went out for dinner, she went to call the waiter to order. And when she was not there, I was accosted by a foreigner. She didn't eat anymore and went back to the room angrily. I clearly rejected her. I said, I don't believe it. Her jealousy seems to be so big all the time. Until I played a strange game with her for an hour, she nodded satisfactorily. I ordered a bed full of snacks for her in the room. Her eyes were shiny, and she started to gnaw with a big bag of chips. She playfully stretched her foot to the tip of my nose, and I caught her ankle neatly. As soon as I pulled it, all the chips were scattered on her face. She lay on the bed in despair, and I got up and walked over. I reached in and took out the ones that had fallen into her clothes. She lay quietly, and some things that everyone didn't care about happened. Three days later, the real trip began. We saw all the beautiful scenery and took many beautiful photos for her, she said. It's so beautiful. I turned my head and my eyes fell on her. Not as good as you. When we went there were two people. The three people came back, three years later, in the president's office. I looked at the little guy crawling on the desk, feeling unreal. Since this little guy was born, my family's status has been directly ranked last. The child flapped his arms and shouted at me. Dad, Dad. I couldn't help it. I hugged it and kissed it. You are so cute that I lost favor. Willow and her mother came in talking and laughing, and the child fell asleep on my chest and abdomen. I heard the door opening as soon as I stood up. The baby woke up. Willow's mother took the baby away, and I stared at Leela. Wife, don't you think you are a little indifferent to me? Her hand skillfully unbuckled my belt. I will make up for it now. She really held me tightly. Her father's divorce case was judged to be a clean break. He came to find Willow several times, mainly to ask for some money. I haven't had a father for a long time. He died when he forced me to a debt and after cheating. Willow left a sentence and left. I heard that Makoto's family and the illegitimate daughter were almost crazy after being cyber violent. And now they dare not go out. The debts owed will always be returned in the most needed form. Her father cares about money now, and Willow just wanted a little love at that time. She told me that she had thought about not doing so absolutely, but it was her father who forced her to a dead end. If I hadn't met you that day, and you hadn't taken me in, I would have died that night, Willow said. But I think, if I hadn't met her, it wouldn't seem to be different from death.